Um, I, am, I am doing an experiment on myself. I just want to see what would happen if somebody like me, who is probably the poster child for worst case scenario of content consumption on a device, um, just stopped. Uh, so I am stopping and moving to a monastery for a few weeks, then moving to an Amish farm for a few weeks with no technology, no content consumption, um, and just, I think, trying to reset a little bit of my humanity. Uh, hopefully come back to you uh, when I'm finished and see if there's been any semblance of change. Well, hello again. Hello, my friend. I'm dying to hear what happened. I'm going to show you what happened in your brain, which well, I think is pretty interesting. Oh, huh, interesting. I um, oh, obviously I'm interested in that, but you know, I was I was telling some friends. I said, um, so again, I, I've had no access to the news or social media or my iPhone, my smartphone for seven weeks, and um, initially. It was terrifying the first four days. I'm sure you could help me figure out what happened, but it was, I was sweating. I, my heart was palpitating. I was waking up at 2 a.m. like panicked. It was horrible. Um, you know, there's a name for it. <laughs> tell me. It's called nomophobia. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's so I was nomophobying. <laughs> and um, I, uh, I was living in a monastery here in Southern California for two and a half weeks with Benedictine monks in the silence of their space. Then I moved to an Amish farm for two and a half weeks with a sheep farmer and I made hay and sheared the sheep and herded the sheep and just lived very simply um, without technology. You asked me, how was it? I told my wife, I said, I know I'm gonna go get my brain scan again. I said, who knows what it's gonna show. So let's start with the monastery. What was that like? Yeah. So it sounds like so you gave up your technology yes. and then right away went to the monastery? Well, so I, I left here and then there was three days before I went to the monastery. But yes, gave up technology right away, moved straight into uh, the monastery. And my friend dropped me off, took my laptop, took my phone, and I had no car. And I was on the monastery grounds for two and a half weeks, uh, living with the monks, waking up at uh, 5, 15 a.m., prayer at 5.30 a.m., prayer at 7.30 a.m., Breakfast in silence at 9 a.m., mass at noon, lunch in silence at 1, uh, evening compline prayer at 5.30, dinner at 6, evening uh, vespers at 7.30, and grand silence from 7.30 to 9 a.m. So I lived that for 17 days. Um, and it was, initially it was terrifying. It was horrible. It was, I didn't know what to do with my brain, um, my thoughts. Um, normally we have... The ability when to escape our own thoughts. Like I, if I, my brain starts to fire or fly and I, I have thoughts that I can't control. I just pick up my phone. I'm going to go to TikTok and, whoosh, and suddenly I'm, I'm consumed, but I had nothing. I had no way of escaping. And day four was, I thought I was going crazy. Like I, I, I couldn't get it, get away from my thoughts and just. And what was the, what were the quality of your thoughts? They were very negative. So sort of like the one we worked on. Yes. So your brain shifted yes. into another gear. Yes. So the first four days were terrible. It was, it was terrible. Ter and terrible. Then, I can't even overemphasize how terrible it was. Let me tell you about Byron Katie. No. Oh. She has this great book I love called Loving What Is. Okay. And it, it's about controlling your thoughts. It's where I... Oh. I adapted her uh -huh. questions. Sure. And she said, take someone, put them in jail. They want to kill themselves oh, yes. because they're going to be alone with their thoughts. Yeah. Yes. Take a monk and put him in a cell and he loves it because he gets to be alone with his thoughts. Yes. 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 So what I was that both of those. life? to be alone with your thoughts. So really bad initially. Yeah. How, how did it yeah. shift? It shifted because I think I was able to, um, 
I was able to make peace with a part of me that I'd never experienced. I've just, I have been avoiding, I, I guess I can't even like say, I'm just taking a picture of my brain, for example. It's like, it's like there's, the, there was this, this space where, where I just never even looked at, like I never even wanted to look at it. Like I just avoided it forever. And when I saw it for the first time there, it was shocking and terrifying. But then I was like, no, this is me. These, there's nothing to be scared. This is, God is bringing these thoughts. And God is going to be in control of your thoughts. He's able to, to shift and move them. And for me, it was those five prayer sessions a day. So, I'm so happy for you. Thank you. That seems like such a great experience. Yeah. And then your wife picks you up. My wife picks me up. And you go. And I, I, I got on a flight and I flew to Ohio and I had a friend pick me up in Holmes County, Ohio, the highest concentration of Amish and Mennonite in the country. And um, I moved into their home. And I thought, again, I thought they were going to be very like, you know, you can, you can stay here, kind of see what happens, but just stay at arm's distance. I, that was my perception of the Amish. Uh, I had a few perceptions of the Amish that were incorrect. And I thought, oh, the Amish, no technology. It felt like going from a cave alone to Manhattan, like the Amish are go. They they go a thousand miles an hour. They are, I was exhausted. Sun up, like, okay, get up, do your chores, making the hay, shearing the sheep, going to town, selling the sheep at the auction, going to grandma's house, going to dinner, all the family comes over. And uh, I, did, I had a great time with them. Just trying to uh, understand their view of technology and you know, why it is that they don't have smartphones and, you know, it's different for them. They're all about community. They're all about being together in case something happens. We actually treat a lot of Amish people. Do you? Yeah. In our Chicago clinic, in our Washington, D.C. clinic from Pennsylvania. Well, and there's another myth that was broken. Like, like for me, like Amish are like, no, we want to help. We want to get better with our mental health. We want to, you know, they're not against that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it was, it was amazing. So five weeks. And we what was... So you talked about the transition at yeah. the monastery with your mind. It almost sounds like you went through dopamine withdrawal. I think right that's from what sweats yes. and yes. Uh, bad thoughts. Yeah. And I mean, it's sort of like you're in withdrawal. Yeah, absolutely. And but then you're not. Then you shift. Yes, shift into a place. more peaceful place. Mm -hmm. What was the shift like in? the Amish? Had you already sort of gone through the digital detox? Yes. So, so really for me, the, um, the digital detox, th this whole thing stopped being an experiment about my phone five days in the, 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 the allure and the draw to know and to scroll and all that, all that was horrible to get through, but then it went away. Um, and so by the time I got to the Amish, there, there was no, I had no desire to be on my phone. So like, I just was like, all right, let's go. Like, what's the next thing I got to, you know? Um, so I've been working on a lot of projects at home since I've been back from the Amish and it's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. So. so what do you think is the difference in your brain before I show it? Gosh, I don't know. The one on the left is the one you did originally. Okay. And we talked about the diamond, yep. which is some past trauma. Yep. But the thing that sort of had me concerned was this asymmetrical uh -huh. cerebellum. So this is, I, you know, I almost think of this as like the central processing yeah. part of the brain. And um, on the right side, right side, it, it's... Um, busy but on the left side it's low yeah which is what right here see how much better it is yeah i mean it's really a very marked yeah difference wow um but your emotional centers are actually up and and it's it's sort of a big difference huh what is that and mean? so with meditation we often see an activation oh. of your frontal lobes okay but, but there's clearly a change. Huh. When we look at the outside surface, not so much. Right. If we look back here, see this yep. dent. Yep. That seems better. Yeah. Yeah. But we still want to get your frontal lobes stronger. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. And so hyperbaric oxygen supplements, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, 
but it didn't put you more in a dark place yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the thing that I'm really impressed with uh-huh. is the cerebellar change. And so the cere- cerebellar, can you tell me more about that? So it's really an important, I often call it the Rodney Dangerfield part mm. of the brain because <laughs> it gets no respect. Anyways, has half the brain's neurons. Wow. So 50%, so your brain has 100 billion neurons. Yeah. 50 of them are in your cerebellum. Cerebral. And it's involved in motor coordination. Okay. But also thought coordination. Oh. How quickly you can integrate yeah. new information. Yeah. And we know it's also about emotion, yeah. cognition, yeah. behavior. Yeah. And it's sort of like automatic processing. Uh-huh. So if you think chanting uh-huh. and meditation yeah. and prayer yeah. activates it. Okay. And physical exercise huh. activates there, there it. There it is. So the cerebellum, it, it looks like we got some little, little, little action in the cerebellum, little action in the... Uh, yeah, your cingulate is much busier. So you have a busy cingulate. That's uh-huh. right here. Yeah. And I think of it as the brain's gear shifter. Okay. It allows you to go from thought to thought, move from idea uh-huh. to idea, be uh-huh. flexible, go with the flow. Yeah. And when it's busy, yeah. you can worry yes. and hold on to things. Mm-hmm. And if things don't go a certain way, you get irritated. <laughs> right. Not right. because you want to, mm-hmm. just because that's because it's going. how your brain yeah. works. And, right. and it's busier. Okay. And yeah, what that means, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but the, the big takeaway yeah. is the processor in your brain works better. Okay. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> so the plan we came up with yes. was hyperbaric oxygen. If you yep. can, yep. I got one two miles away from my house. Huge. Right? Brain and Body Power Max, that's the red box. Okay. Multiple vitamin, fish oil, and brain boost. It's my NFL repair formula. Okay. And serotonin mood support to calm this thing down. Okay. Yeah. Just so you're a bit more flexible. Yeah. 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 Because the digital detox didn't calm it down. Right. Right. That's good to know, too. So it's like the digital detox really helped the cerebellum. But Incredibly. Really yeah. Didn't really do anything to that. It, yeah. And then, you know, I love this so much. It's when you have a hard day, let's turn it into good information. So mm. Why? And so I always say, be curious, not furious. Oh, that's good. You say that a lot. Do people know that? I say you? that a lot. So when I say that next Wednesday, I'll be like, Dr. Amen says, turn curious to fear. No, the other way around. Be curious, not, not furious. furious. So when you're upset about something. Yeah. Yeah. Or another favorite, because you and I both travel a lot. Yeah. It's when I go to Europe, like 12 things are going to go wrong. Right. And so I count them. Mm. And I am, I do not give myself permission to be angry until the 13th Until thing the 13th. And okay. when the 13th thing goes wrong, I'm going to yell at somebody. Okay. That's good. And I've never yelled at anybody. That's amazing. Yeah. It's That's like, good. That's good. What is it in Forrest Gump? Shit happens. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it just does. It. yeah, that's right. That's right. It just does. That's good. That's good. Right. Yeah. We are flawed. Yes. And so be okay with being flawed. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Turn bad days into good data. Cool. All right. How do you feel about everything? Amazing. Really. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you.